Warning, the following video has personal opinions and will contain personal bias. Anyone sensitive to someone else's opinion may want to turn away now. But thanks for watching anyways. Hey there guys, Dragnoa here, and welcome back to another Vanguard discussion video. With the recent announcements relating to Set 5 of Overdress, I figured I'd give my thoughts on why Nostalgia Pandering works better in Overdress in comparison to what they attempted and failed to do in the B-Series. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before I attempt to talk about why Set 5 is doing a better job at Nostalgia Pandering in comparison to the V-Series, we have to go back about 5 years. During the tail end of the G-Series, they had already released decks that gave us upgraded versions of some of the more iconic units for the original series. These being Blaster Dark, Dragonic Overlord, and Blaster Blade in that specific order. These brought new strategies to the game by giving us new and powerful and generic support that could be splashed into the older version of those decks without too many issues. For the most part it was harmless, as people back then enjoyed upgrading their decks with these newer cards. However, as time went on, Power Creep became a massive issue that was noticeable and most of the cards from those sets became obsolete way too quickly, eventually getting to a point where every single set that came out Power Crap the previous set, and as things went on, it got too expensive, enough to a point where people who got back into Vanguard with those decks stopped playing the game altogether. As a result of this, Bush Road, in a vain attempt to make the game more affordable again, rebooted the game and gave us new versions of Blaster Blade and Dragonic Overlord. Where the same cycle continued, and continued, and continued, with each and every single set, Power Creep be the next. But by this point, people were more confused at the very idea that the game had just rebooted, this early into the game's lifespan. Not only that, but they also created a separate format to make the need for stable cards from older sets in the G series and beyond that, not an issue. This left people way more confused and had a lot of questions as to whether or not the game was going to be stable. And this became even more of an issue as the years went on. As we saw most of the units from the original game, and even Vanguard G, get retrained versions. This by far was the biggest issue. They had pandered too long instead of giving us new units to use. They attempted to do this briefly midway through the V-Series with the Infinite Deity Cradle set, and for the most part it was well received, and people were wanting more and more new units instead of them retraining the older ones. Unfortunately, Bushiro didn't get the memo, as they decided to nostalgia pander throughout 2020, by giving us the G-Series cards, and to continue to make the same mistakes as before. Flash forward to set 2 of Vanguard Overdress, where they announced the encounter cards, featuring two iconic units, those being Dragonic Overlord and Phantom Blaster Dragon. People this time, by this point, were completely pissed, because they were still nostalgia pandering to these units, despite the fact that they already did so during the V-Series. Bushiroad had claimed at that point that they were only going to be doing this kind of pandering once in a blue moon, and so while people at first were upset, eventually they didn't mind seeing how, let's be honest, they weren't doing so well competitively. Now with set 5 of Ola Dress, they decided to nostalgia pander once again by giving us Majesty Lord Blaster, Jogonic Overlord at the end, and Phantom Blaster Overlord as the cover cards of this new set. This is meant to be part of the 10th anniversary celebration, and this time, people are really excited for these only units to be returning even despite the fact that they gave us these cards not that very long ago. Why is this? Well, it's due to a few reasons, but I think the biggest reason is because we were not expecting this set at all. This is also mimicking the original set 5 way back in the original era, so even going as far as giving us sleeves from the first 5 sets of the original series as an added bonus. When you take everything into consideration, this attempt at nostalgia pandering is 10 times better than what B-Series attempted to do a few years prior, and I think the biggest difference is night and day. They decided this time around to give us new units to play with before giving us and reintroducing the older ones by giving us Phantom Blaster Dragon and Dragonic Overlord in set 2. And while I think this wasn't necessarily a good idea, at first, if this was meant to be a way to introduce these other units in set 5, then I'm totally for it. At the end of the day, this makes me look forward to what cards will get the encounter card treatment in set 5 and beyond seeing how so far they've only given us cards for Dragon Empire and Keter Sanctuary to become encounters. Now with that being said, I hope the next time that they decide to give us encounter cards outside of Set 5 will be in 2023, and not sooner. Mostly to make sure that they don't repeat the same mistakes as before. Trust me, a lot of franchises have fallen into the trap where they will basically nostalgia pander into oblivion. The prime examples of this being Dark Magician and Blue-Eyes White Dragon in Yu-Gi-Oh! and Charizard in Pokemon. 
enough to the point where people become sick of them getting new variations all the damn time. And with that being said, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts on everything I just said. Thank you guys for checking out the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye